that you need him to be. Because we all came in here needing him to be something for us. In order for us to remain in anything, we need the power of God. We need the strength of God. What is that thing? Get it on your mind right now. Get it on your heart. And declare that you're going to walk out of here believing it and living like you believe it. Because he's everything we need him to be. Because he is the I am that I am. <laughs> so whatever it is that you stand in need of, declare that today you are walking out of here understanding that he's everything. Everything. Thank you, Lord. Y'all can be seated. Thank you, team. My assignment today was to talk on fight like a girl. Ah, I said, okay, Lord, now what you want me to talk about, Jesus? <laughs> and they gave me my scripture, and if you can go with me to Philippians 4 and verse 13, and it reads, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have that verse, but there's so many other things that go above that, that got Paul to be able to say that he can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. So we're going to go back up to verse six and bring it on down so we can have an understanding. Now, what I'm going to talk to you about is tools. I'm giving you tools that you're going to leave here and do and hold on to. Because it's all good when you're at a retreat and you're like, yeah, I'm going to remain. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm going to remain. And you get out the doors and you're like, okay, God, so about that. Um, <laughs> so what was I supposed to do again? And yeah, God, I actually didn't sign up for this and I really don't even want to do it. But you need tools. You need tools. So today I'm going to give you tools. And so in verse 6, you have Paul. He is talking to the church of Philippians and he's wrote them a letter. He's in jail. He wrote them a letter and he's telling them um, to do these different things. And, and the first thing that he told them to do in verse 6 was, do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. So my first point is understand that you are a warrior and not a worrier. I wanted us to tie this all together because we can wear these shirts, but you got to believe it. You are a war warrior, not a worrier. What is a warrior? A warrior is a person who is experienced in warfare. A person who shows great courage or aggressiveness. Now, I don't know about y'all. I'm, I'm pretty aggressive as a, as a, as a woman. Um, you know, I, I try to bring it down a little bit, you know. So I can only imagine how I am in the natural. And then I take this into the spirit realm. And it ain't nothing that the enemy can throw my way. Simply because I am experienced in warfare. You are experienced in warfare. So he tells them, he says, don't worry about anything. Instead, what? Pray about everything. <laughs> Why did he tell them to pray? Because prayer is our lifeline. Prayer says that I have faith in someone else than myself. The moment that you're not praying is the moment that you're operating in you. Yeah. You have told God, God, I got this. Don't worry about it. I'm going to work this out. And when you do that, you quickly find out that you have not even a little bit of power, not even a little bit of power to change anything. So he tells them to, to pray about everything, not some things, not the things that are just hard, but about 
everything. And then he tells them to praise him for the things that he's already done. So here you have, don't worry, pray about everything, and then don't forget to praise him for what he has done. And this is the one that we quickly forget because we quickly move on and we forget the things that he has done when the, the, the struggle or the life is just holding on to you. And you're like, I mean, God, you're going to bring me out. Yeah. Remember, he had already brought you out. Yeah, yeah. So when you stay in a posture of praise, you can never forget what God has done for you. When you're taking everything to God in prayer, you have everything that you need. So he tells them to, to pray about everything and to praise about everything. Have you ever just broke out in a good praise? In your car driving, you hear some music, you're like, hey, glory. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're good. And then the person in the car next, yeah, right. I'm all right, baby. I'm all right. I'm just giving God praise. I'm giving God praise because he's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. And then it goes on to read in verse seven. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. So the moment that we begin to pray, peace immediately. Come on now. This is a promise. The moment that I get on my face, or I ain't even got to get on my face. I can stand, sit, lay, it don't matter, in the shower, on the toilet, wherever it's at. I can lift up my prayers. Listen, don't not praying in the bathroom now. Don't you knock it. Don't you knock it. It's the peaceful place. I got four kids. It's the only place I can have time with God. All right? Don't knock it. Try it. Go home and try it. Get even have to lock the door. Just go for it. <laughs> but immediately, God's peace that exceeds my understanding. What do we do? It begin to guard our hearts and our minds. Some of you are simply losing your mind because you are not praying. Because this is a promise. The moment you pray. Peace that surpasses your understanding is going to come. And what do it do? It guards your heart. So then you off kilter because you're not praying. Your heart ain't guarded from what's being thrown at you. When it comes down to remaining, it's tough to remain. It can be very, very, very hard. And what I'm talking about remaining in is the thing that God has called you to. It gets tough. It gets hard. It gets tiresome. Some of y'all came in here like, hey, Lord, so um, if I don't hear from you by this weekend, um, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and quit. I'm going to go ahead and quit, and your grace is division. <laughs> but I'm here to encourage you. No, you're not quitting. You're going to pray about everything, and you're going to praise him for how he has brought you to this very moment of weakness, this very moment of tiredness. It's good that you're here. You wanna know why it's good that you're here? Because you're gonna learn a little bit more about God. You're gonna have to lay a lot more at his feet. You're at the empty spot, but today you're gonna leave filled. You're gonna leave content. You're gonna leave ready to recommit or stay committed to what God has called you to do. So he left them a promise of fixed peace. He said that it would, it would come and it would guard our hearts and guard our minds. Then he goes on into verse eight. Bear with me y'all, this tablet, praise God. And it reads, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable, think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Watch what you're thinking. What you sit around and think about determines what your life will look like. If you're not thinking about what is true, what is lovely, what is pure, 
You you thinking about everything else. You just complain and just, Lord, this life just sucks. I'm just in every trial, every five minutes. Instead of God, I am being built up every five minutes. God, you trust me to endure this very thing. God, you have created me for this very thing. That's true. Some of y'all got to learn to believe that thing. That he believes in you. That he has called you. That he has equipped you. Think about those things. When you think about the word think, it's a verb. It means you got to do something. Some action behind it. Think on these things. And then he goes on to verse 9. And I'm trying to get through them because there's a lot of them, y'all. It's a lot of them. And in verse 9, he says, keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard and saw me do. Then the God of peace will be with you. Paul is telling them to keep practicing and doing what he has taught them. He's not telling them to remain stagnant. He's not telling them to remain in a place of just doing nothing. He's telling them, what, what, is, what are the things that he has shown them? He showed them how to worry about nothing. He showed them how to remain in a pruning season, in a season of persecution. How to, to think on those things that are lovely. To think on those things that are true. He showed them how to pray about everything. And how to praise God for all that he has done. He's taught them how to endure persecution because they were being persecuted for Christ. Are you willing to be persecuted for Christ? Are you willing to remain in practicing the things that the word of God has taught us? That's the only way that you're going to get to the next level. You can't just live life and think, you know, I'm going to just walk on into my next level. Hallelujah. But you ain't practicing nothing. You have to prepare for the next. So he was telling them it's going to come. But keep practicing the things that I have shown you and the things that I have taught you. What have you been taught? What are you practicing? Ask yourself that. When you look at your day, did you practice anything? Because sometimes we just go with the wind. We just go through the day. We practice nothing godly. No godly living. No watching what comes out of your mouth. Watching what you're sitting and thinking about. He tells them to keep practicing this. And when you keep practicing something, that means you're remaining in it. You're remaining in it. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, you're remaining in it. Then we go on to verse 10 and it says, Paul began to thank God for them being concerned about him. For they always were concerned about him. And they always provided for him. And so this is my next point. Know who got your back. Know who you are surrounded around. We're going back to you remaining in the thing that God has called you to. He was thanking God for them providing provision for the work that he had done throughout the years. He thanked God for them. Do you, do you know who you're surrounded around? Some of your provision is sitting next to you. It's easy to forget those do, that have walked with you. It's easy to forget because you can only look at those that ain't walking with you. That's what the enemy wanted to throw. But you have to remain in a moment that say, God, I thank you for everybody you have surrounded me around. They weren't called to me. Those that's not supporting you ain't called to me. And that's all right. When I started my talk show, the enemy tried to, tried to worry me with, is people going to listen and, and who going to tune in? Am I going to say enough for everybody? And the Holy Spirit sat with me and said, you not for everybody. Everybody ain't called to your voice. But I have sent certain women to receive from you. Thank God for them. 
Thank God for your audience. Thank God for your tribe. He was in other cities that wasn't even providing for him. But the Philippians, they, they sent. They sent everything he needed. And he didn't even need anything in this moment. But they still were sending provision. Don't you forget those that labor with you. They got a grace for your life. They have a grace for your space. Don't ever forget them. Thank God. Just walk up and be like, thank God for you. I, I love you. Thank you. Lord, thank you for my sis. Thank you for my bro. Verse 11. And he's telling them in this verse, this is where we get to the part of contentment. And this part right here is the part that we all usually struggle with. Because we don't like what it feels like. We don't like a struggle. We don't like, you know, things to be hard. We just want all high moments. But that don't teach you anything. You don't learn nothing. And you can learn some things, but you got to have some low moments. And you got to make up in your mind. That I'll be content, God, with whatever it looks like, whatever it feels like, whatever you have called me to, God, I say yes to your will and I say yes to your way. Not my will, but your will be done. And some of y'all not ready to surrender that over to God just yet because you like your will. <laughs> I, I tell you the truth. I, I, I was in the season, but I was like, I, I like my will, Lord. Now, what you're trying to do is too much. Okay? It is too much. It's above me, Lord. It's above me. And yes, it should be above me. Mm. Me and my husband just went through one of the hardest seasons in our lives. The Lord told us to leave our church and go serve at another church, a church that we served for 14 years. And wasn't nothing wrong. Nothing was wrong. Everything, we just bought a building. Whole city like, you doing what? You said what? You just going to give up that building? Because I'm content in the will of God. I'm okay with the will of God. It hurt. I grieved for six months. But then at some point I had to say, it is well with my soul. What are those areas that you have to determine, God, it is well with my soul? He tells them, not that I ever was in need, for I have learned I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Can you say that you're there? The reality is most of us aren't. And the one thing that stuck out in that scripture for me was that Paul said he learned. So this is where you need to grace yourself. Through every lesson, you are learning how to become content in all things. I ain't just wake up like... Hey, hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm all right with it. It took tears. It took fasting. It took praying. It took throwing temper tantrums. But I learned how to become content in his will. Paul learned how to become content. Paul even learned how to live with everything. Imagine that. That we need to learn how to live on the high. We become so eager at getting there, not knowing that we still got to learn how to be there. But some of y'all want to skip the lessons of learning how to live there, but you just want to get there. And then that's why some fall. 
That's why some don't sustain. You got to go through the process. You cannot skip the process. And the feeling that you're feeling right now of God, I can't do this, is the process. Don't abort it. Don't quit. Somebody's life is depending on it. Had Paul not learned, he could not write a letter to nobody. He was writing to them what he had lived. We are all assigned to someone. What is your life about? What can somebody pull from? Sometimes we're so busy running that we're missing the lesson. And then that person coming, you're like, uh, hey girl, how you doing? <laughs> Y'all, mm-hmm. My sister pray for you. You have to live as if your life is not your own. Whether it's on your job, whether it's in the church, wherever you are, somebody is assigned to you. But you got to be ready. You have to be ready. He said that he has learned how to be content in all things. Not just some things. Every area. Every area of your life. Ask the Lord to teach you how to be content. Remaining gets hard because we're not content. Come on now. We want to just no, oh God. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. No. I don't know about y'all, but that's how I be feeling. I'm good, God. I'm good. I can't do this again. I don't want to do this again. They, come, come, go and give them to somebody else. I'm serious, y'all. All I can do is be real about my own walk. <laughs> then I got to go back and repent. I got to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry because you built me for this. You trust me with this. And then we're going to wrap it up. Verse 13. This is why he can say, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul understood it was not in his power nor in his strength. But it was through his level of surrender and contentment with God that he is able to do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Now, all things is not you just deciding, hey, God, I, I'm just going to wake up and just start doing random things. No. Because <laughs> we love to be random. Those all things are the will of him, the things that bring glory to him, the things that get the good news out into the world. Don't try to pull something random and then put God on it. We see so many random things going on in the body of Christ right now. Because people just want to do stuff to feel important. But this scripture don't help them to do all things. Because this is only the God things that he has assigned for your life. So ask God, God, what is that thing that I can do and do in your strength? But first, before we get there, God, I surrender. I surrender my will over to you. How many are you truly ready to live a surrendered life? Because that's all that this is about. Once you surrender, you can get to the true contentment. Because you are out of the way. We love to be in the way. We love to help God. Get out of the way. You're going to mess it up. I used to love to help God. 
Let me help you, God. I think if we go this way, I promise, God, if we go this way, all will be well. And he's like, hey, yo, daughter, I run this. I'm the I am, not you. Follow my lead. In order to remain, you have to surrender. How many of you know there's still some areas, not how many of you know, how many of you have some areas that you need to surrender over to God today? Thank you, God. I want you to sit in this moment, get that thing on your heart, because I don't want you to make an emotional decision. You wanna know why? There's a lot that's riding on this. So you gotta make a commitment deep down in your heart that no matter what it looks like, God, I'm committed to remaining in your will. And as I remain in your will, I can do all things. So that's my surety. Get that thing on your heart right now. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. God, first we repent. We repent of not operating how you have called and created us to operate. God, we ask you right now that you remove every distraction in the name of Jesus that has caused us to sit in stagnation. God, I thank you right now that your daughters are making a decision, God, to surrender those things that they weren't ready, but God, today they are ready to give it over to you in the name of Jesus. God, they are ready, saying not their will, but your will be done in their lives. God, I ask you right now that you come, come in this room and have your way, God. Come in this room into their hearts and begin to help them to see themselves the way that you see them, God. God, I ask you right now that they get strength to remain in the hard things, God. They gain strength to remain in the persecution for your glory, God. God, I thank you for strength to surrender, God. Satan, we serve you. Notice you have no victory in the name of Jesus. As they go back into their homes and life is waiting on them, strength is their portion in the name of Jesus. They will worry about nothing and pray about everything and give you thanks, glory, and honor, God, because they understand that you have done it in times past and you'll do it again. You will keep their minds and their hearts from anything that the enemy wants to throw at them. God, I thank you right now that their tribe will surround them in prayer. They will lift them up, God, to do what you have called and created them to do. God, we thank you for this moment. And we count it all as done, God. And it is in your mighty name that we have touched and agreed. Amen.
the robe of victory that you have given us. And we seal the work Satan put you.